Hey guys, as promised, we have a lot more progress on the ISS. And the more I assemble this thing, the more I come to realize just how incredibly accurate it is. The only things that are inaccurate are the places where I have messed up the assembly slightly. But other than that, this is quite a piece of work. So what you're looking at here is a number of the nodes of the space station. There is so much detail on this thing, I'm not going to be able to point it all out to you without boring you to death. But this here is the Kibo, Japanese experimental module. Um, which, uh, of course, the Japanese Space Agency contributed to the station. And then we have the Columbus on this side, which was contributed by the ESA, the largest contrib contribution, as a matter of fact, by the ESA. The last time they did an examination of the Columbus using the Canada arm, they saw hundreds of impact craters, small impact craters, because it has been up in orbit for so long and because there is so much space junk there. So a little disturbing, to say the least. But nevertheless, the Columbus has held up well under the, uh, in the impacts and has continued to function. And by the way, right here, as small as this looks, that's a docking node. And the space shuttle used to dock right here. As small as it looks, the space shuttle used to connect there, and that's how our astronauts used to transfer to and from the station. And as you can see, if you want to have a look at scale and size, that is an astronaut, a fully grown human being inside a spacesuit. So this is a huge piece of equipment, to say the least. And here is another perspective to show you uh, the rest of what I've managed to assemble so far. By the way, we are up to 90 subscribers now. So we are nearly at the point to where the giveaway is going to get started. So let's get those last 10 subscribers because I can't wait to start giving these things away. Um, we have here a number of other nodes, some of them more difficult to see than others. You have the U.S. contribution, the destiny in here. Underneath the truss, a lot more difficult to see. And then you have this airlock here, which is known as the Quest. And then you start to have the Russian contributions to the station, the Zarya module and the Zvezda module, which I am probably mispronouncing, by the way. And these are not actually parts of the station. They are representations of the Soyuz capsule or the progress supply ships that the Russians send to the station um, or docking uh, ports for the Dragon from SpaceX. It's been used to resupply the station as well, along with some other types of vehicles that have been used. Hopefully the Crew Dragon will be the next manned vessel to uh, dock at this station. I'll have some more details about that in a moment. And also the communications. This dish up here is used to communicate with geosynchronous satellites back to mission control. And the Russians actually in this module have their own communication system which transmits to Roscosmos. So even though this is a collaborative effort between nations, obviously we're keeping the communication separate for a variety of reasons. And I would assume that given the current state of affairs between Russia and the United States, it might be more separated. But then again, only the people aboard the ISS know that. So, all of that having been said, I have another challenge for you guys. 
So as we look at some photographs of the real thing in orbit, here's the deal. Tell me what the function of these various components are, at least two of them. Just describe the function of the components that I've shown you thus far, or some others that I might not have mentioned, and email them to me, and I will give you 10 entries into the giveaway for this, the second of the ISS giveaway sets. And although it's only been a couple of days since I had my last release, so many things have happened in the world of space flight and space policy. I just felt that I had to do something besides just tell you how many subscribers I have. One real quick thing, though. I can't believe it. But just a few days before I'm going to be giving away this, sorry about the glare on the box, but on Sunday, I'll be giving this set away to a random subscriber, depending, of course, on all the extra things that you've done to earn it. And by the way, I'm going to put links in the description of this video for brand new subscribers who want to increase their chances of winning the SLS set. I'm going to put links in the description to give you one more chance to catch up as rapidly as you possibly can. Any latecomers to give you a chance of winning as well, or improve your chances, rather. But even though, as I said, that's what this was supposed to be about, a lot of things have happened over the last couple of days that have led me to call this episode Boeing Blows Part 2. As I'm recording this, Christina Koch has just arrived back at Mission Control in Houston and has just given a press conference. As you can see, even though a little bit wobbly on her feet, Christina has endured her very long stay in microgravity with amazing strength and resilience, proving without a doubt that human beings can make the six-month trip to Mars and operate after the journey is completed. Obviously, there's still a lot of physical and psychological tests ahead of her, but she seems to be holding up really well. You know, I think I might be in love. Oh, she's married? Damn. Nevertheless, I'm still quite envious because she has just completed an adventure that only a handful of human beings have ever gotten a chance to do. But it's good to see her home because although she has too much class to say it, she came very, very close to not coming home at all. What am I talking about? Well, as we all know, there was a glitch, or most of us know, there was a glitch during the Starliner's unmanned test that caused it to burn too much fuel during the initial launch for it to achieve the proper orbit to dock with the ISS, and so the mission had to be aborted and the vessel was brought back down. And it's a damn good thing that that first glitch happened, because after the first glitch, there was a second glitch it might very well have destroyed the ship and all aboard had a human test been done afterwards as was planned. The second glitch took place during re-entry. Now during any re-entry process, the service module and the crew module separate right here and that's where the glitch took place. Boeing detected this glitch at the last second. Had they not, the two units might have crashed into each other and created not a soft landing, as depicted here, 
but a fatal one for anyone on board. Now, of course, this was unmanned, but had the first glitch not taken place, the second one might have happened during a manned experiment. And the worst part? Boeing tried to cover it up. I'm going to say that again. Boeing tried to cover it up. It was only an in-depth investigation that revealed the truth. So now, Boeing is having to go through over a million lines of code to determine exactly why the glitch took place and how to prevent it from happening again. However, if the glitch had not been detected and the first one hadn't happened at all, which is entirely possible, then everything could have gone quite smoothly during the unmanned experiment. And then in the second test, which would have involved Christina Koch and the rest of the ISS crew coming back down and the second glitch happening under that scenario, it would have been a fatal disaster on the first use of the Boeing Starliner. Unbelievable. And they tried to cover it up. Now that should completely disqualify them from this particular competition. They should no longer be in the running. But guess what? They still are. NASA is still allowing them to correct their mistake and move forward and continue to compete with SpaceX. Fortunately, Boeing is now having to plow through over a million lines of code and SpaceX is ready for their particular launch, which will be taking place sometime in May. So three months. Of course, Boeing, with the manpower and the resources they have at their disposal, they may very well be able to plow through over a million lines worth of code. And with their lobbyists in Washington, they may still try to beat SpaceX to the punch. Unbelievable how this continues. This whole situation can be summed up in two sentences. Boeing is unacceptably corrupt. NASA lets them get away with it. And I can add one more sentence to that. History repeats itself. Because an avoidable accident or miscalculation led to the destruction of the Challenger and those responsible tried to cover it up back in 1986. Seven dead astronauts who need not have died, dead as the result of incompetence, corruption, and a cover-up. And it could very well happen again unless we do something to stop it. And near as we can tell, NASA's just going to allow Boeing to keep doing what they've always done no matter what the human cost may be. It's just unacceptable. In any event, I'm not gonna end things on a real negative note here. Instead, I'm going to give you a couple of real quick updates. Number one, only three people have found the Easter egg that I put in the previous video, although I have given you a hint in this video as to what the Easter egg is. So go back to the previous video, watch it thoroughly, and you may spot it and email me what you think it is because I'm giving away two ISS sets and one of them is reserved for the people who find the Easter egg, which currently is only three people. Secondly, the other set, as I mentioned before, email me your descriptions of, of the various components that I covered as I was describing the ISS set. Tell me what they are and what they do. Send me a, at least two of them, just two, and you'll receive a big chunk of entries into the drawing for the second ISS set. And I'm talking about this as if it's already gotten started because we've only got 10 subscribers to go before we hit 100. So I think that's going to be happening very soon. One other thing. 
One of my subscribers suggested that I do a live streaming Q&A when I hit 100 subscribers. I would very much like to do that, and I would like to do it with the topic of should we colonize Mars, and if so, where should we colonize it? I think that that would be an interesting topic, but I don't necessarily want to restrict it to that topic. I'm willing to answer other questions. Uh, depending on how personal you want to get. You'd be surprised how much I'm willing to tell you. But in any event, we get to 100 subscribers and I will announce a live streaming Q&A with the Angry Astronaut if that's something you guys would be interested in. So, as we close in on the announcement of the first giveaway winner and get ready to get started on the ISS giveaway, stay angry about space.